Hey guys, welcome to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're going to be working on the, uh, continuing our work on the Zenith Cruiser, and I'm going to explain some uh, mistakes that I have made on the build uh, regarding the front section. So stay tuned guys, uh, and I'll explain what happened. Okay, guys, so uh, I want to take a moment and kind of go over uh, a little bit of a, a little mistake that I made, uh, which could have really caused a lot of problems down the road when I'm fitting the front section of the fuselage to the rear. So um, I made a mistake. Uh, I'm making, uh, I was putting together the slide and seats. Well, the instructions that are online that I've been able to find and I and, and I may be wrong on this Zenith so if it if I am incorrect on this uh, please put a comment down below pointing us in the right direction to find uh, the instructions for this because I haven't been able to locate them uh, but essentially the I, I I went the wrong route I did I did things at different times than they should be done in order to make sure that the front half of the fuselage is straight. Um, and because of that mistake that I made, I'm going to have to purchase new parts. Um, thankfully, only four, no, six parts uh, that I'm going to have to replace. Uh, and it's because I drilled them out incorrectly. Um, I'm not going to be discouraged about this. It's this is a learning process. I've never built a full-size airplane before. I've never had to work with aluminum uh, to where when you mess up, really that part is done, and you have to re you have to start over again. Uh, okay, guys. So uh, sorry about that. I had to get my camera all situated again. Uh, but yeah. So as you can see, uh, what I did get accomplished. Now I've done this. All nice and level now, as you can see on the bubble. And I also made sure that it was level front to back. Okay, because the front to back and square, everything is good to go. Um, now, I have this part in place. Um, I did rivet the L angles from that side. Uh, let me see if I can get it in play. Yeah, there you go. You got those L angles. L, the L angles are riveted to the uh, crossbar, but not to the skin yet. Um, I only clecoed them to the skin, right there. But it is all lined up and square. Everything is leveled now. Um, I have the back plate in here as well for the gear channel, and then I wanted to make sure that these were not were fit in properly. So I have those temporarily. Uh, clear code in place just to make sure that they are fit in properly. Now that that's fit in properly on both sides over there as well, I went ahead and made sure this piece was in and attached to the channel, and the channel is then clear to the bottom skin and then also to the uh, the center console there, uh, where the seat belt that's a seat belt harness piece. Uh, which is going to go right there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to bend that out, but so it's just click code in place right now, but it's to keep everything tight and everything square right now. Um, but yeah, so it's now that that's all lined up um, and that's all square, now when I get the new pieces back here um, that go the SS01 and SS02, which go on both sides over one on this side and two on this side as well. Uh, once I have those kind of uh, set up um, and laid in place, I'm going to go ahead and we'll do the uh, L angles to this to that part inside here. Um, same thing. We'll get the L angles on the inside pieces of that as well on both sides. Get those all nice and squared up nicely where they're supposed to be. And then I can lay the top pan piece over that and then line up all the holes 
Um, maybe draw out a template. I'm going to measure out on a piece of paper or cardboard, cardstock or something, a template so that I can then um, transfer those holes from the slide and seat pieces uh, in the channels onto that. Uh, make sure that they're all nice and neat and set up properly prior to doing any drilling. So, like I said, you know, mistakes happen, um, but fix your mistakes properly. Make sure that everything is done correctly. Um, make sure it's all square. Uh, if you can see on the, on the back side of the airframe, this part I had no problem whatsoever. Everything fit in there with no extra forcing or nothing. Everything just fit. And that's the way it should be over here. So if it doesn't fit, take a minute, re relax, review what you did, and try to figure out why it's not fitting. And then fix it. Okay? So, like I said, guys, it's not a big deal if you make a mistake. Just, you know, if you make a mistake, just fix it. Do it right. Fix it correctly. And then you'll have a nice straight airplane at the end. And, that's and so to close out this video, um, I want to just go ahead and let you guys know I did make some changes uh, to uh, what avionics that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm not going to use any of the iPad setups with the iLevel. Um, to me, I, I did a lot of research, and a lot of guys have, uh, have mentioned that, um, you know, what happens when your iPad is no longer uh, supported? Now you have these panels in there that are no longer, uh, you're going to have to redo your whole panel, basically. Um, so I decided to go ahead and use the uh, Grand Rapids Avionics, GRT. Uh, I'm going to use their Sport. Uh, I believe it's the Sport EX 7-inch uh, non-touchscreen. Um, I don't really need the touchscreen uh, functionality. It, that's not a big deal to me. Um, but it's going to have the moving map. And uh, I'm not going to put a Garmin uh, WASP GPS yet. That might be something that I'm going to install later down the road. However, right now, the option that I'm going to have in there so that I can do my ILS approaches and VOR approaches is a NAV radio. Um, I believe it's the NAV 2000 uh, is what uh, GRT uh, recommended for this. Um, so I'm probably going to go with that. That'll give me IFR approach for ILSs with the, and localizers and also VOR. So with that, I can still fly IFR. Uh, my GPS cannot be, because it's going to be an iPad for the GPS, uh, it cannot be a, um, a primary when I fly IFR, which is not a big deal. I can fly, uh, most of my flights are going to be VFR day or night, uh, but having the VOR and the localizer uh, option will at least allow me to do ILS and VOR approaches. Um, so I can stay current on my IFR. So that's where we are right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I will uh, probably go through when, when all the avionics actually show up, um, I'm gonna sit down and we'll do a video of unboxing everything and uh, let you guys see everything that I, that, that's gonna be going in this airplane and how it's gonna be set up. Um, but we got a long ways to go still before we buy, put the engine on, front, on the front of this thing. Uh, Basically, we're going to finish up all this outside here. We're going to get most of it painted probably before we put the engine on too. Um, paint's all coming. It'll all be here in the next couple of days or so. Uh, a lot of other gear uh, that uh, I also needed uh, to perform um, all the painting. That's all showing up. Uh, I'm going to be making up a uh, paint booth in here once I get to that stage. Uh, but we'll be painting the inside cabin area first. Uh, so we'll be roughing that up, uh, priming it, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and spray the olive drab inside there uh, to get that done. Right now, it's just the self-etching primer on there. So we'll get all that done, guys, and uh, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I appreciate everybody's support. Um, I'm at 
little over 700 subscribers. I would love to get to 1,000 subscribers in the next couple of months. That would be awesome because uh, that really motivates me to make these videos for you. For the most part, these videos have been for my records, my logbook, basically, of this build. Uh, so, and, and, of course, I am keeping it uh, up to date on the EAA uh, log as well, build log. So uh, uh, look me up, guys. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, anything, please let me know. I'll try to answer them in the next video uh, if I remember. Uh, I've been so preoccupied with getting this build done and, and working on this airplane. Uh, my goal right now is 2022. Uh, January of getting this airplane in the air so we'll see if I can make that um, I already missed my first goal of getting this on the wheels before I went go back to work but unfortunately you know there's a little more work than I thought but hit that like button hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys on the next video so keep building and keep flying bye now